Right, I can spot the problem immediately. Um, oh, it's not a Betamax. Hello, and welcome to another Mr. Betabyte video. And this one's a little bit different insofar as you probably guessed. <laughs> um, we're not looking at a, a video recorder uh, in this one. Um, this is a Tascam CD160, as you can quite clearly see, uh, very well advertising its model number. And um, this machine uh, has come from a school and it's quite broken. Um, it's actually been broken for a good probably five, six years. Um, and I just happened to mention to the head uh, that, uh, you know, <laughs> it's not working. Um, do you ever use CDs? And she said, yes, yeah, it'd be, be great if we get it working, but um, we have nobody that can fix it. And I said, well, <laughs> today's your lucky day then, because <laughs> I do fix these things. So uh, that's really nice. Um, so uh, without further ado, let's crack on and see what's wrong with it. So let's turn it on. And it's opening. If I try and close it, it's very slow. And it just opens again. And pretty much um, it had been left open for like, easily five years, uh, maybe even longer than that. Uh, it just will not stay closed. Um, I'm sort of hoping this will be a, a quick video, <laughs> which basically means it probably won't. So, uh, yeah, let's take it apart and uh, let's see what's going on. So it's a little bit of an odd one, this. I'm just wondering how this will actually come apart. It has the 19-inch um, rack mount kit fitted to it, um, which seems to sort of bolt on to the, um, the outer casing. So I think if we take these screws out, I'll do the same on the other side. There is a screw there, but I think that screw just literally just holds the... Um, Rack mount kit to the to the outer case. Uh, I think it's just the one. Yeah, one on the back. This door powered on. Yeah, so that just lifts off. You can see there, there's a screw that sort of mounts on and keeps the uh, rack mount side of it attached. Let's move that out of the way. So here it is in all its glory. Not much in there at all. Um, so man's, uh, man's, <laughs> mains power supply. Um, and then we've got the, obviously the, the actual CD mechanism and then the electronics. So it's, it's really, it's, a very cheap and cheerful um, deck, really, in many ways. Um, so the sled itself, sled assembly, doesn't appear. Yeah, it's trying to. I suspect it's probably going to be just a belt. Um, so let's have a look at that. Uh, it will need a jolly good clean. So um, I've got this strap here, which is a bit odd. got a 
front. Is there much else holding this? Uh, looks like, yeah, you don't actually have to take the front off. Um, there are holes here and here, which is with this camera angle, not easy to see, but through there you can actually get get to the bottom of the mechanism Should now come out. Uh, but wait, what you need to do first? Uh, what am I missing? Oh, just put it out. Okay, <laughs> I can live with that. And um, Looks like you're gonna, yeah, there's a, a cable tie um, which you can't see, um, but that is actually restricting getting to anything. So I'm going to just clip it and actually getting the deck out rather. And uh, obviously, some sort of warranty thing going on there. There we go. Um, so there's the motor. See, it is really very dusty. Um, push that in a little bit. Yeah, and there is a belt, and the belt looks terrible. So you can see the belt there. see it's just really floppy um, I have to say I wonder if I can actually yeah <laughs> change the belt without having to take it apart any more than I need to but uh, to be fair maybe I can shall I have a go let's have a go uh, so Trust these tweezers, and I think getting it off is going to be a lot easier than getting the new one on. So there's the belt, and yeah, it's pretty. It's just starting to go to goo. You can just feel that sort of like it's losing its elasticity. So uh, yeah, uh, let's see if I can find a belt. Stand by. Well, I've actually not done terribly well. That's about the closest belt I have, uh, which is quite a bit smaller, as you can see. But it's thin enough. And my thinking is, if I can get it on, then um, we can at least test the rest of it. And I'll, have, I'll just have to order another belt. Well, that's on. <laughs> um, yeah, what I tend to do is put the, get it around the um, motor pulley first and then sort of just like, sort of manually wind it round the gear. And uh, yeah, that, uh, that will get it on. It actually seems okay. Um, and obviously it's quite a bit tighter, but that belt does have quite a lot of flex in it. So yeah, I think what I'll do is I'll put it back together and uh, give it a quick test.
Okay, so here goes. Um. Well, I didn't expect that. Okay. Um. Right, so it's trying to open and it's not. Don't try this at home. <laughs> it's saying open. Mm, but it's not. Oh, it's actually given up. Okay, so we have got something else wrong. At least it's saying error now. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's carry on with that. So just doing this by hand, this is really tough. I mean, it's really hard work to get this to move. Um, but it does actually do a full load, but it's really hard work. So I think what I need to do is strip this um, assembly down and just give it a good service, good clean through and find out what is making this so tough. Okay, so I'm going to start by taking out these two screws here. It's a much smaller one. And the same on the other side. Some clips like so. Super. Oh gosh, yeah, it's so stiff. I should be able to remove this. There's a little screw down there, which I think I need to remove because that's just helping to keep the rail. There's one each side actually. So one side and one this side. See it there. And I think that's just helping to keep it, or making it captive. And There we go. Let's take those out. It's just so stiff. So let's take this belt off. Yeah, it's really very stiff. So I think what I'll do um, is I'm going to take it apart, clean it all up and uh, see if that improves things. So take that gear off first then. This gear has a screw on the top. Just give it a good grease basically. Uh, I don't know whether there's any alignment with this. I mean, I'm sort of taking it apart as if there isn't. 
Uh, but no doubt we will find out. I don't think there is. I think it's just literally, it just works. Let's give it a bit of a clean out. Clean up as well. Gummed and gunged up. I think what I'm going to do is just put all the gears <clears throat> on a cloth. So let's put all the gears on a cloth and just give them a, a zap with slick and lubricant. Dry them off again, not that thoroughly, I have to say. I'm not terribly worried about getting silicon lubricant everywhere because, well, <laughs> what's the worst that can happen, really? So it immediately feels better. Um, some of this in here let's leave that for a minute and then clean off the excess and I think that one went on there Got a bit of run on, that's good. And this one, so this one obviously has the belt on it, so I've cleaned out the, um, the run, if you like, of the uh, of the um, where the belt goes. There's a bit of string in there. Let's get that out. Oh, yes, this looks like string. Yeah. Bit of string. Not going to help, is it? <laughs> and uh, then we need this gear here. So what have I done wrong? I've done something wrong here. So I think oh, I see there's like a an assembly there. So this is driven by a gear. And that's actually nice and flexible. Some more rubbish there. So that's actually nice and flexible. So I'm just going to load that up. And this might be where the timing might happen. Whoops. God, it's still really tight. I don't understand why that is so tight. Huh. Right, so there's something going on here, with and that seems to work. So I had to put the this gear. It's got like a little blank zone. 
to match up with the blank zone on, on this gear. And that seems to have done it. So, okay. Uh, let's put that screw back in. This screw back in. And clean my hands. Oh, that seems to have completely messed it up. Oh no. Here. Yeah, that's seeming a lot better. Let's clean my hands before I put that belt back on. So, it should be a bit easier. Now it's all open. Tiny bit of grease on there, but I don't think it's gonna matter. I'm gonna have to get the proper belt for this because this is way too tight. I wouldn't be surprised that'll be the problem now. It's just the belt's too tight. Well, I think that's got it. It still feels terribly tight. Uh, anyway, we'll put it together and uh, see what happens. And I don't know how much of this I have to actually put back together. Yeah, I think I think that belt's going to be just too tight. Anyway, we'll put it back together. I think I'm just literally fighting against the belt now. Am I putting that in the right place? No. So let's just whip this back into the deck and um, like I say I don't expect this to work because I think that belt is just way too, it's too, way too tight. Um, but uh, still it's worth a try. If we can prove it works in principle then I am happy. I don't think I need to do this, but I'm going to just 
Again, just put one screw back in just to hold the deck. Um, which doesn't seem to want to sit properly, now it is. Okay, so let's plug it in. saying open. It doesn't seem to want to do anything now. Okay, I think I need to get the right belt um, and then go through this again, see if I can find a manual for it as well. Um, obviously some odd things going on with this. And yeah, interesting. Okay, so it's been about seven weeks since I last looked at this, mainly because it's been summer holidays, so the school's been off. And um, it's been pretty pointless looking at this when I've got plenty of other things to do. So yeah, but back to it. Um, so uh, I've decided that there has to be something broken um, with this um, tray. So I'm going to take the whole lot out again and um, just see what's going on really. Um, I have now got the correct belt. Well, I think that's the correct belt. <laughs> we'll soon find out. So let's get this out. I think I only put the one screw in. And I can't remember if I took it off here or at the um, other end. Oh, it's just a pull out, isn't it? And so there we have it. I don't know, it just... Well... Yeah, it seems to just jam. It seems to always be at the same point. So this feels all very stiff. Okay, so putting this gear on, um, load it right the way up. Um, this gear actually lifts the, the mechanism up. Um, and then just drop this on. There's a, a, a flat, flat on one side of the gear and get that roughly in the right direction. And then it will, when you get it roughly right, it will um, drop on. And this goes back on. Uh, that's about I took off. You can see it's a heck of a lot smaller uh, than the one I put on there. So yeah, that's the only one I could find at the time. Um, so yes. Um, I am still a bit concerned that I might have broken teeth on this gear, um, but um, basically this now, uh, I wonder actually if it's better if it if it's done closed. Yeah, you see that rail isn't quite right either, so I might have a look at that. Uh, having said that, that's supposed to be locking that. Okay, well I can live with that. Okay, so this will either be great or it will be a total disaster. So <laughs> that's the way we like it. Um, should just be able to pop this in and then connect. Okay, so here it goes.
So it's fired up. That's a good start. No disc, but what happens? Well, it's still really stiff, actually. It sort of surprises me because Yeah, see this is weird because it's it like gets stuck. I think what I'm going to do is actually see if it will play a CD. Because this thing has not worked for a very long time. Oh, it's sort of trying to. I mean, the sled could do with a service, and I don't think I've actually cleaned the um, cleaned the lens yet. Well, it's sort of working. Yeah, it's skipping about like a crazy thing. So the sled will need to clean. Um. <laughs> It just stops there. And it's going so well. And I mean, when it auto close, it should auto close, you see. Um, it should ever. Almost like Yeah, it's like it's like these sliders just aren't. They're really, really stiff. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a bit of grease on those sliders to see if it makes any difference at all. Um, at least we know the gears are good. So yeah, let's, let's try that. So I think we got there, but the only thing is I didn't record the fix. <laughs> um, basically, this has been sort of broken for years. Um, I remember seeing this machine, gosh, must be eight years ago um, in this school with the drawer just stuck out, um, jammed out, and um, it it obviously has been bashed and whatever. So that's as good as it's going to get. Um, what had actually happened? And like I said, I didn't record it, but the the two sliding um, sort of arms that are in here. Um, they're, they're sort of kept in place by two little plastic clips and those plastic clips over the time I mean, obviously this has been at some point it's been hit really hard from underneath and it had damaged the clips it had actually bent them so what I've done 
rather than try and bend them back so I thought they'd, they'd break, I've just taken a, a scalpel to them and just shaved off a little bit of those clips and it's fine. It's, it is fine. Um, the more I try it, the better it gets. See, it's, it's ejecting absolutely fine now, but it just needs use now, I think, just to sort of work the grease in. Yeah, it's working all the time now. Um, occasionally it will come out and it will trigger and go back in. Um, possibly that's a sign because there's a little bit too much tolerance on those two sliding arms now. Um, but um, I've cleaned the mechanism, cleaned the sled, and um, hopefully we should have... Some music <laughs> so there we go <clears throat> it's working um i will say i mean if you're into this stuff you're probably really cringing at <laughs> this video because it's just like me it's almost like botching it um but very much it's it's had a really hard life it's been damaged it's been in a school um it's um I'm still not convinced that's quite sitting right oh no it's fine um and I, I really didn't expect to get this working again. I just thought the plastics were going to be too damaged. But it is working, and um, that's brilliant. And apart from, I mean, let's try it again. Uh, you see, that's, that's fine now. But it does, you know, when it's been sat for a while, the first time you open it, it will just sort of stick and close again. Then you do it again, and it's fine but it's so much better than what it was. Um, you can see where the silicon grease on my fingers is polish these buttons, not a bad thing. Um, I did over grease it before. Um, it was just really flooded with grease just to see if um, that would help. And it didn't. Um, I did actually take out these two screws uh, to, to aid with putting it all back together. But what I found I had to do uh, with the timing, because obviously the timing is quite odd you need it to sort of be closed so this can drop uh, can lift what I did was I um, loaded the tray manually uh, with this out of the, the, the deck um, and then I used the little thumb access to the gear at the front here to wind it right the way through and then lifted this before that screw was in and everything was back together and this top was back on. So the tray was in, but um, lifted the tray and drove this. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I don't think it quite did, but yeah. Basically you've got to get it so the tray at the very furthest end of the run, the tray is fully up and able to read the disc with the tray in and everything hunky-dory. Once you've done that, you can put it all back together, put this back on, put the screws back in, and then uh, you're good to go. So, um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this one. Um, I'm sure I've done this completely wrong. Um, I'm sure the manual would be completely different um, on how to do this, but uh, hey-ho. I mean, ultimately, it's a, a very sort of top-line name, but it's actually a pretty, pretty poor machine to be be fair and I bet they paid a lot of money for this as well so I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that as well because I've done, not done any research really on what this machine actually is uh, past it's um, a cheap and cheerful design for um, sort of performance type places and halls and whatever type CD drive but uh, CD player but uh, with that, I hope you liked it, and I um, hope you learned something from it as well. It might help you if you're, you're trying to get one of these going. And uh, see you in another video. Bye for now.